Hello everyone. Today we are starting the new series of our lectures and the first chapter of ours that is life processes. I'll try to cover up the important points of the life processes and not only the important points you will get to know for the additional concepts which you should know. So first point is key what are life processes what are these so the processes which are needed for the maintenance of the living state of the living beings they are called as life processes and they are needed because we are having the life so there is no alternative for the life processes they are necessary and for them we are having the systems we are having the organ systems like excretory system digestive system right now these are the life processes the nutrition excretion respiration and the transportation the transportation it is said to be circulation in the animals let us see the hierarchy of our building we are made up of the cells so cells they constitute the tissue tissue form the organ and organ form the organ system so that is what i am telling you ki for each and every life process we are having the organ system but actually the system it is made up of the cells it is the unit which is considered as the fundamental and structural unit it is a topic in the 9th standard right so the organ systems like for the nutrition we are having the digestive system excretory system respiratory system and the transport system in plants circulatory system in animals we will discuss in detail in this chapter how the various organs they work in a coordinated manner to do the particular work so right now we are discussing about the life processes and we have discussed that the processes which are needed for the maintenance of the living state of the living beings they are called as the life processes actually they are needed for our living so let us discuss the difference between the living beings and non living beings this is the first sub topic actually you should know the difference as a layman we know that the living beings they are having the life and we are able to distinguish between the living beings and non living beings very easily even a child can but actually as a science student we have to give the particular points which differentiate the living beings and the non living beings and the first point which you can give as ki living beings they show growth right living beings they show growth but the non living beings they don't show growth they don't show growth and here you know the living beings they show movement non living beings they don't show movement in the plants the displacement definitely is not occurring but here in the plants the growth of their body parts it is considered as the movement we know that along with the animals the plants they are also the living organisms so right now we are discussing the properties which are present in the living beings which make them the living beings and the differences between the living beings and non living beings the first difference we have seen that growth it is occurring it occurs in the living beings but it is not present in the non living beings same as for the movement movement it is present in the living beings it is not present in the non living beings in the plants the growth of their parts it is considered as their movement 
right plants we cannot see the plant uh, moving but actually the growth of the plant parts it is considered as the movement and the living beings they require the energy right for the energy we need the food so food consumption is the property of the living beings because we have to have the energy that is why we consume the food and also living beings they respond they have the responses responses means the changes towards the stimulus which are present in the environment so living beings they just show the responses towards the changes occurring in the environment they are called as a stimulus you are having the control and coordination we will discuss in detail what the responses are towards the stimulus which are present in the environment and we feel right we are having the consciousness that is a characteristic property we are having the metabolism the metabolic reactions which are taking place in our body metabolic reactions which is said to be metabolism that is also a property of the living beings and that is a definite property of the living beings in the 11th standard a very good topic we are having for the metabolism so these are the points through which we can differentiate the living beings and non living beings let us summarize them the living beings they show the growth do non living beings they don't show the growth living beings they are having the movements they show displacement for the food shelter and mate and in the plants however we are not able to show see the displacement but we know that in the plants the growth of their parts it is considered as the movement living beings they show the responses they respond towards the changes in the environment they are having the consciousness a well developed brain and the nervous system human beings they are having and living beings they are having the biological reactions metabolic reactions inside their body which are considered as the living reactions and make their metabolism and living beings they are having the life processes which we are discussing in this chapter the nutrition reproduction excretion circulation transportation in plants right so these are the properties of the living beings which make them different from the non living beings let us discuss the food the first property which we have to clear that is nutrition the first life process which we are starting here that is nutrition and nutrition it is what it is the utilization of the nutrients in the body but to understand the nutrition we have to start with the food food is what food acts as fuel to give out energy actually we need energy for each and every process suppose i am writing here that requires energy you are seeing there that requires energy you are thinking there that requires energy inside our body metabolism takes place that require energy nerve impulse transmission that requires energy messages they are being carried from one place to another in the body that is nerve impulse transmission that also requires energy muscle contraction that is needed for the movement of our limbs hands and the legs that requires energy so energy is needed for each and every life process as well as the various processes in our body and it comes from the food so that is why it is said ki food acts as fuel to give out energy we consume food we require food to get energy which is stored in the body in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate right so food gives us energy and it is the nutrients in the food 
which should be utilized in the body to extract energy right so nutrition is what the intake of the nutrients inside the body and utilization of them for various processes that is nutrition nutrition it is coming from the word nutrients and actually we all know that nutrients are what nutrients are carbohydrates fats and proteins along with the vitamins minerals water but these are the major nutrients so carbohydrate fats and proteins along with the water and vitamins minerals they are the constituents of the food they are present in the food and the major components like carbohydrate fats and proteins they are having their respective functions right what i uh, what i am uh trying to say here that carbohydrate and fats they are having the function to give out energy they are the energy giving substances proteins they are the building up materials they are needed for the growth they are needed for the repairing of the wear and tear so these are the nutrients which are present in the food and utilization intake of nutrients in the body intake of nutrients and utilization of the nutrients in the body for the various processes that is nutrition so first life processes process which we are starting here that is nutrition and the uh, these are the nutrients which we have to know because actually their utilization is there in the body for the various processes that makes the nutrition so carbohydrate fats and proteins again the carbohydrates and fats they are the energy giving substances proteins they are required for the growth and repairing of the wear and tear and vitamins minerals they are needed in the body in small quantity but Uh, you know they are necessary like iron is necessary for the blood calcium is necessary for the bones and if we are not able to take them in proper amount we are having the deficiency diseases like scurvy like like rickets anemia etc so right let's come to the uh, main topic of ours nutrition nutrition it comes from the nutrients food it is made up of nutrients food is having the nutrients these are the major nutrients along with their respective functions carbohydrates and fats they are the energy giving substances proteins they are the building up materials and let us come to the types of nutrition now you know these are the major types of nutrition autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition it is present in the plants and heterotrophic nutrition it is there for the animals right now we are discussing about the types of nutrition autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition where the plants they are able to nourish themselves they are able to make their own food through the process of photosynthesis we cannot avoid the photosynthesis when we are discussing the autotrophic nutrition in plants and heterotrophic nutrition where the organisms they are depend they are dependent on the other organisms for their nutritional requirements in another words you can say ki they depend directly or indirectly on the plants for their nutritional requirements and further heterotrophic nutrition it is categorized into holozoic saprophytic parasitic and mixotrophic nutrition so holozoic nutrition let us start with the holozoic nutrition 
holozoic nutrition is considered as the ingestive type of nutrition where the complex food it gets ingested digested absorbed assimilated and egested out actually what i am trying to say that this is a complex mode of nutrition where the solid food material it is utilized in the body and holozoic mode of nutrition it completes in five steps what the steps are ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and egestion we will discuss in detail these five steps in human digestion very fascinating you know function of the alimentary canal you will be able to find in that discussion so this is what the holozoic mode of nutrition where the nutrition it is completed in five step and the digestion is the second step of the holozoic mode of nutrition here we will discuss the holozoic mode of nutrition in detail in amoeba and human beings the example again you can give as the amoeba and human beings means the organisms who are having the holozoic mode of nutrition you can give amoeba you can give human beings next is what the saprophytic nutrition saprophytic nutrition is what where the organism it feeds on dead organic matter which is being produced by the plants and animals the dead organic matter and here we can give the example of bacteria and fungi the bacteria and fungi they are having the saprophytic mode of nutrition you know you can give the example of agaricus mushroom here as a saprophytic organism you can give the example of rhizopus as a saprophytic organism parasitic mode of nutrition is the nutrition where the parasite it depends upon host for the shelter and nutrition of it two organisms are involved in the parasitism one is said to be parasite second is said to be host host means to which the parasite is dependent right so paras parasitic mode of nutrition it is a mode of nutrition where the two organisms they are involved one is said to be parasite another is said to be host and parasite it depends upon the host for the shelter for the nutrition and in this case the parasite it is so much dependent on the host that the host condition get derailed you know parasites they cause the disease in the host you can give the example of intestinal parasite like ascaris inside us you can give the example of tapworm inside us you can give the example of leech which sucks our blood you can give the example of plant parasite cuscuta so these are the examples and in the parasitism in the parasitic mode of nutrition they are pathogenic they cause the disease in the host and that is why they are considered as the pathogens so these are the examples of the parasites children ascaris tapworm leech and cuscuta as we are discussing the modes of nutrition not only to understand the modes of nutrition is important but also you have to learn for the examples for the particular mode of nutrition like holozoic mode of nutrition it is present in the human beings it is present in the amoeba the saprophytic mode of nutrition you can give the example of fungus and bacteria in fungus you can particularly give the name of mushroom agaricus 
you can give the example of rhizopus rhizopus is what the bread mold it is and the parasitism parasitism where the parasitic mode of nutrition occurs and i have given you so many examples of the parasites ascaris tapworm leech cuscuta and let's come to the mixotrophic nutrition a good example of mixotrophic nutrition it is euglena euglena it is having the mixotrophic mode of nutrition actually it is an organism where the pigments are green pigment is present so as the green pigment is present it is able to photosynthesize so as it is able to photosynthesize it is considered as the autotrophic organism because it is having the green pigment it is able to photosynthesize but in the absence of the light because we all know that in the absence of light the photosynthesis couldn't occur so in the absence of light as it is not able to make its own food with the help of photosynthesis it acts as the heterotroph it become heterotroph it depends upon the other organism for its nutritional requirements so it can act as the autotroph it can act as the heterotroph in the presence of sunlight it is able to photosynthesize and act as a as an autotroph and in the absence of sunlight it acts as the heterotroph means it depends upon other organisms for its nutritional requirements so that is what the example of the mixotrophic mode of nutrition it occurs in the euglena so i have planned to cover up these many points what are the life processes the difference between the living and non living organisms what is energy what is energy means from where the energy comes and we have discussed that from the food the energy comes the nutrients they are present in the food which gives us energy and that is all about the nutrition we have discussed in detail what is nutrition is energy is stored in the body of the living organisms in the form of atp adenosine triphosphate and it is produced in the mitochondria of the living organism types of nutrition we have discussed the two types basically are autotrophic and heterotrophic and further categorization of the heterotrophic mode of nutrition it is there which we have discussed so this much is there for this video i'll take from here only i will continue from the nutrition like the types of nutrition we have discussed now we will discuss in detail the plant nutrition or the autotrophic nutrition in the another video so keep watching the video and have a very good day bye